Hello everyone! Today, we will be talking about various Power Reaper builds, how they fit into this meta in World vs. World. There will be some corresponding gameplay footage as I talk about the builds and where Power Reaper stands right now. So, stay tuned! The first and foremost build that every other Power Reaper plays and that I have played since back in the Heart of Thorn setup PvP is the standard Spite Soul Reaping Reaper build. This build provides incredible burst damage via Shroud and Gravedigger while providing decent sustain via Blighter's Boon. The self sustain is primarily dependent on Might Generation via Chilling Victory that gets converted to Life Force or Vitality because of Blighter's Boon. This works great against almost everything in this game, except for one in its specialization, Scourge. Enter Scourge in the arena, a ridiculously powerful class that is dominating the meta since the release of Path of Fire for very good reasons, and one of the things the Scourge excels in is shutting down Reaper. One of the biggest contributing factors is the corruption of Might to Weakness via the F2 combined with Path of Corruption. Let me show you how easy it is to do that in the next two footage, where I'm fighting a Power Reaper as a Scourge. For the sake of time, I'm speeding up the video, mainly because I'm not proud of winning this fight as the odds are heavily stacked in my favor. But that proves my point. As a Power Reaper, the last thing you want on yourself is permanent weakness throughout the fight. It essentially kills every bit of your DPS and the Scourge can out DPS and out kite you and win. Therefore, we are at a crossroads where we need to adapt to this new meta and create a non might dependent build. In the first build that I worked on, I removed all source of might and made the class purely dependent on big and powerful critical hits while not generating any might. So, let's look at our primary might source, Chilling Victory. Since we use Suffer, Great Sword Pull, Chill to the Bones and Chilling Nova offensively, combined with the Reaper Shroud abilities to apply even more chills, we get a fair amount of might from this trade. So we drop that. However, removing this trait also makes Blighter Spoon less useful, so we drop that too. As it currently stands, we don't have any sustain in this build, and the only trait line we can choose for sustain following this setup is Blood Magic. We will look at two variations of it, which we will drop either Spite or Soul Reaping to make way for Blood Magic. In the first variation, I opted for removing Spite as I was going for a completely non might build. Since without Spite we are not applying much vulnerability on a target, Decimate Defenses does not synergize, so I opt for taking Soul Eater and Reaper's Onslaught Trace from the Reaper line. The Soul Reaping line remains the same, with Death Perception providing 50% boost to Critical Chance in Shroud. Now let's talk about the Blood Magic trait line. I decided to drop the Offhand Warhorn for an Offhand Dagger to get more Condition Clear and Boon Corrupt. So the trait Quickening Thirst immediately enticed me and I have stuck with it ever since. Next of course we take Vampiric Presence for giving us the necessary sustain combined with Vampiric Minor Trade as the life leech occurs both out and inside Shroud and it continuously heals you for tiny amounts as you attack. The final trade is where things become interesting and also depends on how you want to play. If you roam in a group of course you would want to take Transfusion as it provides a little bit of group support and some sustain to yourself too. However, if you're like me and spend most of your time solo roaming on a Power Reaper, Unholy Martyr is a godsend trait and absolutely reverses the table against condition spike classes like Conde Mirage, Conde Thief and to a big extent Scourge. As the tooltip says, you pull in 5 conditions from allies when you go into Shroud. This is essentially zero when you're solo roaming, and it consumes 3 conditions and transforms it into life force, 7% per condition, 21% in total. 
This one trait is so valuable while solo roaming, I can't even begin to express. 21% free life force whenever you exit Shroud, as long as you have three conditions on you, no matter how trash those condition stacks are. This essentially means that you can reliably cleanse three conditions every 10 seconds while never ever running out of life force while fighting condition heavy classes. You are seeing some of the fights in the background that utilizes this trait heavily to turn the table against the Condi classes out there. So, the Blood Magic, Soul Reaping, Reaper build works excellently against condition damage classes and also works well against other classes except for two, Power Thief and Power Mesmer. The reason is simple, the build excels in encounters where you can pull off your main damage from Gravedigger and Shroud Spin multiple times without the enemy kiting away and resetting the fight. Both Power Mesmer and Power Thieves build so that they can spike and disengage. The only thing that can kill them is a counter spike and one of the ways to counter spike a thief or a mesmer is entering shroud when they are spiking you and do lots of packets of damage in quick succession as you can see in the background footage right now. The spike damage comes from spiteful spirit, suffer, chilling nova and chill of death since neither the power thief nor power mesmers build into toughness and more often than not, they can be brought down to the 50% HP threshold. Without spike trait line, this spike damage is not possible to achieve and the power mesmer and power thief has a significant upper hand to the point that you would wish you had the spike damages when you fight them. Hence comes our second blood magic variant, blood magic, spite, reaper. By giving up soul reaping, we are giving up on death perception, but we are gaining bit of chill so that we can stack vulnerability. Therefore we drop soul eater and pick decimate defenses in the reaper line. Siphon power starts generating might when the target is at 50% HP, which would seem like a problem while facing a scourge. But since you have a lot of condition removal in this build, it won't create a huge issue. You won't end up with permanent weakness on you while facing a scourge. On top of that, you get back your access to spike damage capabilities against power thieves and power mesmers, while retaining your resilience against condition spike builds like Conde Mirage, Conde Thief and Scourge. Now let's look at the gearing choice. You can find the gearing setup for Vanilla Power Reaper build in my previous roaming video descriptions. In this video, I will be talking about the gear setup for the Blood Magic Spite Reaper, which I am currently running. As you can see on the screen, it is a mix of Marauder and Cavalier in armor, Marauder, Berserker and Cavalier in trinkets and Assassin weapons. For armor runes, I dropped Holbrack runes since I don't rely much on might to do damage. Instead, I am trying out Rune of the Worm to get some vitality and a lot of ferocity. As it currently stands, 
I'm at 220% normal ferocity and 240% shroud ferocity, which is pretty neat. Ever since I made this build a few days back, I feel like I have attained a balance between sustain and damage. Solo roaming as a power reaper has become more enjoyable. You will notice that I talk about dealing with only a few select classes in this build commentary. That's because every other class is a fair game for a reaper and it boils down to skills and situational awareness. I do hope that you found this build interesting and are willing to try it out in your own way. Please enjoy the rest of the video and as always, thanks for watching. Yes. 